Fourth is July, Christy Masson, Bill McKechnie, and I went to Cincinnati for Buck Herzog and Wade Killiford. And I was in Cincinnati then, till 27, I was traded back to the Giants. Uh, back there, the 27, 28, and 29. Welcome to the Daily Rewind, brought to you by ThisDayInBaseball.com. My name is Tom Hannon, and I'm your host. On today's show, we are excited to have Hall of Famer Ed Roche. On February 9th, 1927, the Giants send versatile George Kelly, along with Cash, to the Reds for holdout outfielder Ed Roche. The Giants sent Roche to the Reds way back in 1916 with the Vol people Christy Mathewson. Of course, Matty was long past his prime at that point, and he only pitched one game for the Reds. Ed, remembering the abuse he'd received from McGraw back in 1916, tried to get New York to trade him by holding out for a salary of $30,000. McGraw said, I've been trying to get you back ever since I traded you a long time ago. Now you're either going to play for me or you're not going to play at all. Ed ended up signing a three-year contract with the Giants for a total of $70,000. The Sporting News announced that signing, said that Farmer Roche, who raises, among other things, the price of his services with each fiscal roundup, is ready to face the high cost of living in New York. During his three seasons with the Giants, he'll hit over 300 twice. In another salary dispute, he set out the entire 1930 season, and then he'd return to the Reds for one final season in 1931. Ed was known for his holdouts, generally skipping spring training, using a holdout as an excuse to report just before the season began. He felt he stayed in good enough shape hunting in the offseason and didn't need six weeks of spring training. All right, now let's get to Ed Roche. Uh, uh, the first team you played for was the Chicago White Sox. Well, I was in 1913, yeah, I went to the White Sox 13 in August that year. From Evansville, I was in the uh, past uh, B League there, then Central, the old Central League. And I went up, uh, up there, and then uh, the next year I jumped to the Federal League, as the third major league he started. So I was in that league then for two years, 14 and 15. And they broke up, and I was uh, sold to the New York Giants. I was there then until the 20th of July. Christy Masson, Bill McKechnie, and I went to Cincinnati for Buck Herzog and Wade Killiford. And I was in Cincinnati then till 27, and I was traded back to the Giants. Uh, back there, the 27, 28, and 29. The, and 30, I only hit 320. 24 over there that year. They want to cut my salary. So I told him to go jump in the lake. I think you did. <laughs> Mr. Ralph, what made you decide to retire from baseball? Well, I wanted to cut my salary after I hit 325 over there, 324 or 5 over there in the Better Lake. Uh, I had a three year contract there for $70,000. That's $23,300 up in a year. Well, uh, when I, it was out in 1930, and they wanted to cut my salary to $15,000. I told them to go jump the lake. I don't know whether they did or not, but then I told them to. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rush, what did, after you left uh, the Cincinnati Red Legs in 1931, did you go into business? What did you do? Nothing. I never went in any business in my life. Was, I, I took care of my money and, and invested and had to go out and go to work. And the devil, these guys know today if they don't have, they have to go out and go to work. What do they do with their money? Yes. Have a big time? All right. Ed Rush, 1962 Hall of Famer, telling us a little bit about his story. That was a great interview. So I just want to dive just a little bit into this um, because Rosh was a historic figure more about his salary holdouts than he was about his play. I mean, of course, he was a Hall of Famer. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1962. 
He won two batting titles, and he played for the 1919 Reds that won the championship that were a far better team than they're given credit to. But I hear all the time people talking about in the old days, uh, players would play for the love of the game. And they watch Field of Dreams, and they watch um, you know, the Joe Jackson character smelling his glove and saying he would have played for meal money. Well, that may have been true for some of them. And of course, they loved baseball, just like players love baseball today who play. Uh, I've watched Mookie Betts play for the last six years in Boston. Matter of fact, I was at his very first game in Fenway Park uh, when he debuted. And he is a fantastic baseball player. He was a generational player. And for people to say that he is just greedy, uh, that would be incorrect. I've watched him play. He plays for the love of the game, too. But he's also playing for a business. And if you look at somebody like Ed and you look back in his history, he knew that baseball was a business. And this was back in 1920. He would not go to spring training. He held out. He held out and missed an entire season. And the fact is, is that baseball has always been a business. Uh, and the players got paid to play. Therefore, it was a business for them as well. So I want you to keep that in mind when you start thinking about uh, players and what they've done throughout their careers. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're thinking about players and you're thinking about the old times. And of course, we talk about the old time players a lot on this day in baseball. And we love them and we love their stories. And they have just um, such a rich tradition and a rich feeling about the game. Uh, but they were playing for money back then too. And there were holdouts back then and there were uh, salary disputes. So this uh, situation like that's just happened with the Red Sox and Mookie Betts, etc. Um, it's not new. Uh, it's not new to baseball. It's not, uh, it's not something that all of a sudden has happened. Uh, of course, they get paid a lot more money now than they used to. But it is part of what baseball is. Part of baseball is an entertainment business. I believe they did $11 billion last year in income. And if you're listening to this podcast, there's a chance that you have contributed to that. So uh, it is what it is. Uh, it's a big business and players get paid a lot of money to play it right now. And But it's not new. And I just want you to think about that. And if you want to research any of that, of course, you can go to thisdayinbaseball.com. We have uh, a lot of articles about players and the historic salary disputes over time. Now, you can find the clip that you just listened to on the YouTube. Uh, the channel that I found that clip was ORCO Development, and they have uh, quite a few clips on there, actually, uh, baseball player interviews. It's definitely worth checking out. And if you enjoyed listening about Ed, you can find out much more about Ed on thisdayinbaseball.com. So I'm going to ask you for two things, and it's the same two things I ask you for at the end of every show. Tell a friend about the show if you're enjoying it. The main way that a show, a podcast grows is when someone tells a friend about the show. 70% of all new listeners come from somebody else telling them about the show. So you can share us on social media. You can tell a friend verbally. You can do an app, an app like Swoop where if you connect with all your friends, they can see what you're listening to and they might be uh, encouraged to listen to our show. And of course, please subscribe. When you subscribe, you're going to get to see all our new content when it comes out. It'll show up right in your feed and it's a great way to know because although we'd love to publish every day, uh, we're working our way through it. Uh, and secondly, you can help us by sponsoring a page on thisdayinbaseball.com. If you go to Ed's page, you can go to McGraw, Matthewson, or any one of our other hundreds of thousands of pages on thisdayinbaseball.com. You can sponsor the page and share your special memory. It could be that you just love a player. Maybe you wrote a book about a player. Maybe you have a blog. Whatever it is, you can share that on by sponsoring a page on thisdayinbaseball.com. Now that's it for today's show. I hope to see you at the ballpark. I'm out. Peace.